Greg Baum last updated 7.14 the 17th of January 2019 Getty Images Roger Federer looks a picture of cool as he plays a backhand against Daniel Evans. Getty Images Federer of Switzerland plays an elegant forehand against Evans. Getty Images Daniel Evans reacts with bewilderment in his second round match against Roger Federer. Tennis opinion, Andy Murray's sudden and shocking mortality is a reminder that Roger Federer won't be with us for eternity, either. As he has played every Australian Open this century, it is hard to imagine how it will be at Melbourne Park when he is gone. But for the sake of the exercise, let's try. For a start, whoever could reproduce that forehand, that overhead too? After Federer's forehand, everyone else's is merely getting the ball back over the net. who might play this deceptively physical sport without either sweating or grunting. Federer could fold up his shirt after five sets and sell it as new. Who will carry himself with Federer's grace? Who will indulge ball kids, sign autographs, hold court patiently at practice the way he does? Who will make some anonymous hitting partners day, no life by staying on for a chat every time? Who? With the world at his feet, will bend down to pick it up as Federer does? No one, you imagine, could make goofiness seem so cool, make a receding hairline the very thing, and make bandana such a timeless tennis must. Dan Evans, Wednesday's second round opponent, tried the hairline, but went too far. Read more, asterisk Tomic oversteps the mark again with Hewitt criticism asterisk pressure ramps up on Hewitt asterisk Hewitt says Tomic tirade is, Bernie being Bernie, no one will gratify questions in four languages. No one will spare a considered thought for the least known Australian on the circuit, though I'm sure it's the same for obscure French, English and Americans at the other majors. Who could let inferior opposition down so gently in the first week of a tournament the way Federer does? who will let near-equal opposition down so gently in the second week, as Federer often has. Step at a time, qualifier Evans will have gone to bed on Wednesday night, content in the honest knowledge that he played Federer as well as anyone could, and he lost in straight sets. One way to look at it is that Federer should not have had to battle so hard against Evans. The other is that Evans is a top 50 player down on his luck and judgment, and that Federer survived anyway, and that will be without prejudice to his further progress here. It was very cat and mouse, very interesting, Federer said. I liked the match, but he likes most matches, and why wouldn't he? Add feedback who will enjoy the eye even of his peers and rivals? After being sliced to pretty ribbons by Federer here two years ago, Tomas Burdick said he would rather have been in the stands watching. Whoever could improve at 37. On Wednesday, Evans thought Federer moved better and attacked more than when they played at Wimbledon three years ago. Who in such a combative environment could so rarely grow cranky? It does happen, but exceptionally. After all, Federer has won the Stefan Edberg Sportsmanship Award 13 times, and has been the fan favorite for the last 16 years straight. Esquire's Tim Lewis described his relationship with fans as long and monogamous. Of course, being the highest-earning player on and off the court for the last 13 years helps with equanimity, I can only imagine. Who could take over the umpiring of a match and defend no one, not even the umpire? Federer did on Wednesday when rain threatened, offering Evans the chance to stop or play on, as he pleased. Will anyone deal so evenly with defeat? Correction, Federer sometimes is a bit, dare we say, surly, in defeat. But he has had to deal with a little of it, especially here. Federer has won more matches at the Australian Open than any other tournament, even Wimbledon. Surely no one will love the game the way he does, the way others think they do, staying up all hours, watching, studying and talking it when not playing it. This is not just a monogamous relationship, it's like Albatross's, one only for life, sorry, Mirka. Of course, it helps that the game loves him back like no other. Who will keep men's tennis on the dignified plane to which Federer and his peers have raised it? On exposed form, it won't be an Australian. Who will be too perfect for some, which just shows you can't please all 7 billion people all of the time. He'll do most of us. 
at the time of the one significant interruption to his career, after injuring his knee while running a bath for his kids, the New York Times' Brian Phillips wrote, and since he is Roger Federer, we have to assume he was running a gorgeous bath, possibly the greatest bath of all time, perfect temperature, immaculate bubbles, faint scent of lavender, business as usual, who could match Roger Federer? Well, in readying himself for Wednesday's match against the Tricky Ovens and all his slices, Federer said he tried to imagine how he would play himself. Now, there's a match. It has been like this all century long. Some players have some of these qualities, some will emerge with more, but it will be a long time before anyone who has them all salutes. How will it be without him? The question's right there. After his Dreamtime win over Rafael Nadal here in 2017, Federer wasn't even sure he would be back the next year. He was, and won again. But he is assuming nothing. To John McEnroe, on court after round one, he said, My mindset is that it is possible, to win the tournament. It will probably be someone else, but it is possible, and still is. We don't have to worry about a post-Federer vacuum yet. The age.